Hi everyone, today I want to talk a bit about the advantages and disadvantages of uh, physical books versus ebooks. Uh, I'm just using the tablet because, you know, of course the ebooks go on here. Um, I've uh, learned quite a bit, particularly uh, when doing my last book, or my latest book, uh, which is why I'm using this one as the example, Two Gun Heart, um, because this is really where I went all out in trying to sell the physical books and get into the bookstores, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and where I probably learned the most about it. Now, when you become an author, sort of the dream is uh, getting yourself on that physical book. You know, you see these in the bookstores, you feel them, you touch them, and you're like, oh, I want to be that person. You want to have that physical book. You want to see it on the bookshelf and, you know, uh, uh, and sort of have that personal glory, if you will. And it's the excitement and it's seeing it. And also not just, you know, having the front, the back, the spine. And when you have the hardcover, you have, you know, you pull it open and you have your own face on the inside there and like a biography or a description in there. And it looks just so fantastic. And it looks even better when it's on a bookshelf and, you know, all that. And you have that dream of having the uh, signing at the bookstore, you know, and everything. As I've been doing this, uh, I've been finding that, well, you know, of course, that's the place for... Um, uh, traditionally published books and they, the uh, traditional, traditional publishers have the resources for not only publishing enough of uh, enough prints but then sending them to all of the bookstores promoting them etc etc we as independent uh, producers or independent publishers don't really have that luxury for the most part um, we can get them into a few select bookstores but for the most part bookstores are usually hesitant to have a lot of our books and some of that is stubbornness and some of it is there's a logical reason they only have so much book, uh, book space or bookshelf space um, and they really need to make sure that they you know can sell uh, they've also gotten used to a whole system where um, if it doesn't sell they can you know uh, sell them back to the publisher and if you yourself don't necessarily have the money at all those given times you can't buy them back and they're kind of screwed um, now, in a way, that seems a little bit weird that, you know, why should they be able to sell their books back? Normal, you know, most companies, most uh, stores don't get to sell back their material. They have to take a risk with it. But if they didn't, bookstores would be less likely to take risks with new things. So, especially as an independent uh, author, you, they want to be able to sell them back to you or to your company, it's, which is far more likely. It's very rare that they're going to trust you enough just to sell them right back to you and you know you can hardly blame them they don't necessarily know you and the bookstores that will do that typically are people who know you and they know where you, that you, where you live and they can come get you okay maybe not that extreme but you get the idea um so uh and you know so you it does wind up happening in particular because this is part of nebraska history and you know chicago history you know that sort of thing very specific places um, I can go to those places, and that's usually where I can where I can get it. Even Barnes and Noble. Once I got into the Barnes and Noble system, then I could go to the Barnes and Nobles in Nebraska, and most of them would would carry it because of the fact that it's regional. It's got you know a, a, a nearby subject, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then you know same with Chicago. Uh, but even with Chicago, it's been a little bit you know difficult because I'm not personally a local there. Never have been. Um, I'm going to go more into that uh, later on, uh, more into how to get into bookstores and etc. But for the most part right now, what I'm going to say is you mostly want to go ebook. Um, for the most part, I, what I've really learned overall is that the use of physical books is for signings and it's for sending out for reviews. A lot of reviewers will want a physical book. Um, it's for any of these promotional type of things where you want somebody to see what it's like and you know have a copy of it like in newspapers or whatever or going into competitions to go for awards and that sort of thing. It's for promotional uses. The physical book as much as it's cool to have on a bookshelf and you know what you want to you know have it for you're not going to have as many sales because it's an uphill battle for an author to get into bookstores. An uphill battle that in the end is just not really worth it. I guess that's where it's kind of going with the whole bookstore type of thing. It's like on the one hand, sometimes they're being stubborn. On the other hand, sometimes they're being logical. They really are going to have a struggle. Uh, they're having you know, a lot of bookstores are struggling regardless. And then, you know, to add on top of that, uh, an independent artist that they aren't necessarily familiar with. 
um, they might have difficulty, uh, you know, trusting. And then if you get past all those barriers, even if they buy it, they buy like three copies or something like that. Or they go in consignment and then you're just giving them copies and hopefully they'll sell. Maybe they won't. You have to kind of keep track of them. Um, even if they buy them, they want to be able to buy them back. You have to keep enough in your bank account to be able to buy them back. So, you know, ultimately, as independent uh, independent publishers, it's really best to get the e-copy out there and promote that and to utilize physical copies as promotional pieces for the e-books. Um, so, of course, you know, getting it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and that sort of thing. And I'm going to go more into that on, on another post as well, where I compare Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. It's really Smashwords and... Amazon, because uh, Amazon is, of course, the biggest uh, ebooks place, and then Smashwords has everything else. There's also one called uh, Drive Through Fiction, which is good for certain genres. Uh, I'm going to go into that on a different one, but I wanted to right now go into uh, this sort of, you know, the physical book. You're going to utilize those for any signings that you happen to do, uh, which would be at bookstores, but more uh, to the point at places like, uh, you know, clubs that you can meet, uh, places that w would be interested specifically in this subject, which, again, I'm going to go into uh, on another video. Um, but for, that, for now, I just wanted to point that out, that you don't want to get the e-book version made for, for Kindle, for uh, uh, the Nook, um, the Moby version. Uh, I forget what the other one is called, but, you you know, you can look those up. I'll also put some links down below. Um, but the ebooks are the ones that you're going to get more sales on because you don't have to have sales back. You just put them up. People buy them. They download them. Um, and once they have them, they have them. And you just get whatever you know you have. And once they get to know you and get to trust you more, then they'll buy the fiscal bo uh, copies of the book. You're going to have far fewer copies of those sold, but you'll actually get those. And if you start to sell enough ebooks, you're going to become well known enough that uh, you know a large publisher might take a chance on you or um, uh, bookstores might take a chance on you and then you're going to start selling more of the physical books possibly in bookstores or just straight out by orders and that that works fine as well uh, all right read more independent books i'll uh, see you uh, later on